Hi, this is Jamie McMillan. I wanted to do something a little bit different. Instead of writing my posts, I want to do a series of video posts because I want to show you some of the materials I've used over my homeschooling years um, with math. And I thought it would be a little bit easier to show you than to have to write about it. Um, now, I'm not a mathematician and I'm no expert on teaching math, but all I know is that I'm not a big fan of textbooks and neither are my kids, at least not until they got older. Uh, so when they were younger, up until about sixth, sixth grade, I tried to stick to math that was um, more hands-on, more interesting, more imaginative, um, and something that would keep and hold their attention. Uh, we did a lot of games, read all kinds of books, and I'm going to show you that stuff. But first, today I want to start with this one. This is the one that I read first, way back when my kids were still too little to understand it. But I had never heard anything like this my whole time growing up in math, all the way through college. No one had ever told me this stuff. So this is called A Beginner's Guide to Constructing the Universe. And it's all about the mathematical archetypes that Lockhart alluded to in his article, Lockhart's Lament. Um, this is, you know, numbers are way more than calculating and measuring and just doing business math and figuring out decimal places. There's so much more beauty and elegance and art and philosophy in numbers than you probably ever knew. <laughs> and, um, you know, everything from galactic clusters to crystals and fruits and vegetables and, you know, the way leaves grow on a tree. And, and maybe you've heard some things about the golden mean or the golden spiral, um, uh, proportions, and patterns that you find all through nature. This does a wonderful job of showing you the potential. And if you start with this, if you start with this book, then it might inspire you to um, keep finding more materials that will help inspire your kids. This one's probably a little too hard for under sixth grade. I don't know, I tried it. They didn't quite get it. I, it had to come through me. Like I had to read it first and then I could adjust it to something that they could understand. But there is lots of cool pictures and the way it's structured is it starts from, it's a voyage from one to ten. So they start with the number one obviously and the shape that that represents which in this case is a circle. I'm going to try to find the first. So for each chapter he starts with uh, the number and the symbol, the appropriate symbol, and he goes on to talk about where you find it in culture and in ancient art and philosophy and mythology everywhere in um, nature. I would highly recommend you read this first and um, get a sense of how it works and then if your um, kids are interested Try reading it aloud together, um, sit on the couch, maybe do some of these constructions. All you need is a, a compass and a pencil and, um, you know, go on walks, start noticing architecture in the cities. You're going to be surprised at what your kids will pick up and see. It's really fascinating. So I highly recommend this book.